Welcome to another 8 minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about the .NET scripting object using C Sharp and Opalis. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a field management TSP specializing in Opalis. Found in the system category, the run.NET script object can be one of the most useful objects of all the categories. Now this is a scripting object, so unlike the vast majority of objects, this isn't forms based. It is script centric. So let's crack it open and see what's inside. Well, as first we see there is somewhat of a form here. We get to choose the language. We can copy, paste, or type in a script. Then there's an advanced tab where we fill out some more information. And then a very important published data tab where we are going to actually generate the fields, which will actually be used to determine which fields will be placed and which data will be placed on the data bus. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, go to the details tab and determine what kind of language we're going to be using this object for. And as this demonstration is all about C Sharp, we're going to choose C Sharp. So the first thing after we determine what language and maybe we're thinking about the script um, or the C Sharp code in this case is we need to go to the advanced tab. And we need to add the namespaces and the assemblies that they reference. So let's go ahead and do that once. I'm going to click on the add button. We're going to type system. All C Sharp classes use uh, the system category, so we're just going to add that in there. Let's go identify the reference that that's related to. You're going to find this in the following location C, Windows Directory, Microsoft.NET, Framework, and then you can choose from the various uh, frameworks here. I'm just going to choose from um, version 2. And then in here, there's a long list of things, but we want system.dll. Once that's been added, we can see that's been added here. We can add other system related items in here, like system.txt or system.collections.generic. And these are the things that will be able to be used in the C Sharp code or the class that we're going to create. The next thing we're going to do is create some published data. We're going to just create one field. Let's go ahead and click Add. And this is going to be the name of the field as it's published on the data bus. So this is just going to, let's call it Result. And it will be a string. And the variable name, this is what's going to be declared as a variable to be used in your in this case C sharp class. Now if you this is actually declaring it right here so you don't have to declare it back in the script screen. So let's go ahead and pick a uh, good name for it. Let's do str result. Something that relates it, we know what kind of uh, data type it is and then uh, we can um, use it wisely on the other screen. Now we can go back to the de details tab. Now you don't have to think about declaring the class or anything like that. You can just simply type str result equals test data and then make sure you follow the syntax of the C sharp. So this would actually work as is right now. Now all we're doing is hard coding the words test data into the results field. Let's go ahead and add another dimension to this. Let's go get a custom start object and make a dynamic so we're not hard coding a value. So we're going to connect those up, create a parameter. It's called input. And then in this object, we're going to use that input field as published data. And you can see I got to, to keep the syntax the same, but instead of hard coding, I'm going to actually use the published data, in this case, from the custom start object. Now when we use the testing console, we can pass data in and it'll dynamically be put on the data bus and then used in the .NET scripting object. So let's go ahead and hit run. We're prompted for the input value. And this time we'll just put Charles Joy, just something um, that I can spell easily. We can see the data was passed. And now instead of test data, we can see that the result is Charles Joy because it was dynamically on the data bus and onto that object and then used within that script. Now let's take a look at something a little more difficult and a little more useful actually. So we're going to go ahead and make some modifications here. We still want the result 
to be the field that we're passing through. But we're not going to just pass the data directly to uh, to it. We're going to manipulate it in some way. So let's, we're going to have to create some new uh, variables here. So string str input equals. Then we're just going to move this guy up there. All right. Now we want we're going to do a find and replace on something in that input. So string str to find equals and we might not want to hard code that so I'm just going to leave it um, open for now uh, I'll add publish data in there in a second string str to replace again I'll leave that until we have published data in the custom start object and this is where we can use the result so now we can do um, str input dot replace we're going to use variables that we've created and then um, we could hit finish we could add those two new fields in here so this one's going to be to find and this will be to replace that way we can pass in the input what we're looking for and what we're going to replace it with and then right click subscribe publish data to find and then once again right click subscribe publish data to replace so we can make that look a little bit cleaner all right i think we're ready to test let's go ahead and hit the testing console and run so the input will be Darth Vader is scary and to find we want to replace scary with not scary let's take a look if this works looks like we get success so let's take a look the result is Darth Vader is not scary even though the input we entered was Darth Vader is scary so the replace worked like a charm Let's take a look at a practical example. I happen to have one here. In this example, we're parsing the WMI output from the query WMI object and then passing that data into the end process object. So let's take a look at the query WMI object. Pretty simple. We're essentially just selecting name from all the Win32 processes. From there, we're going to pass that output to the what I've named the parse WMI results object, but it's, it's just one of those .NET script objects. Let's open that up. And I'll use expand so we can take a better look. What I've done here is I've declared a string, which is the results, and I'm bringing in all the results from that query. And then I'm creating an array called results. I'm going to split that array based on new lines or carriage returns. And then I'm going to iterate through each one of those array pieces and create an addition to an actual list that I've created here. And that list was declared over in the published data. You might have been wondering what that collection checkbox was for. Well, the collection creates a list. So I created a collection named list, a string collection called results. And then in advance, you got to make sure you have the collections namespaces. So now that we could see that we're passing in data here, storing everything in an array as opposed to just one single blob and then we're parsing that array and creating a, a list which would be used as a collection and put on the data bus as uh, multi-value data. And you'll see why I'm parsing the query WMI here in a second. Alright, let's do step over. You see it's going to run the query. You can see the results are just one blob of data. Not, not, it's not multi-value data. So we're going to turn that into multi-value data here. Next. And before we check that, let's go look at what the collection created. You can see there's the ellipsis, so that means multi-value data. You can see each one of these is separate now. And we should see two notepad.exes in here, and there they are. Now, if we run this object, you can see that we're passing in the results here. And we can go ahead and hit next and you can see that it closed out the notepad.exes there on the bottom 
That was a more practical example of using the .NET scripting object to parse data from one of the foundation objects, in this case the query WMI.